the most requested video by far from you guys is my knitwear collection and today is finally the day i'm sharing with you every single piece that i own i asked some of you on instagram about which topics you would like me to talk about and the questions that i got the most were about how to store how to pick the knitwear um level of itchiness warmth which ones i wear the most and all that kind of stuff so if you want to know more about it just stay tuned i'm going to try and link these below but just keep in mind that some of them are not available because they're old styles but i try to link as much as possible and just look for something similar that you could get if you're looking for one of these um, specific sweaters hello everyone i'm very excited for today's video because it was a very requested one and we're going to be talking about the first of all the amount of knitwear i own and why i own so first of all i do live in a very cold city i would say new york gets really cold over the winter so knitwear is something that i really appreciate and i like to have because they obviously not just keep me stylish but they also keep me warm and living in a place that you have uh, seasons it's definitely important to have the right clothes and just things that make sense to your lifestyle i grew up in brazil i was born in brazil and i never ever ever had any knits i didn't i simply didn't because i come from a place that's very warm and i would be just at the beach the whole time but when it got here i noticed that it got very cold and then I decided to collect um, knitwear. I didn't have as many uh, maybe five years ago, but since I got to know Cezanne, I just became in love with their knits and I started to collect them. So I do not have a lot of shirts. I don't have t-shirts basically at all. I don't have any other pieces in this amount. The only piece that I have in a huge amount, I would say it's knit, it's um, sweaters and cardigans. For the reason i mentioned i do wear them a lot during the spring during the fall and obviously during the winter i wouldn't say i would pick them for summer but some of them are definitely possible to be worn if you're looking for something i can certainly recommend my most worn of sweaters i would say that during the winter is definitely james jumper james jumper is by far my warmest sweater and the coziest one i do have it in two different prints i have the acru and navy which has stripes and i also have the model olive they're both different different compositions i would say the one i wear the most is the acru and they have in so many different colors now they're absolutely amazing very cozy very warm it's 100 percent merino wool and i'm gonna be washing that with you today so you can see how i take care of it so for James, you will see that I have a um, special way of taking care of it because it's wool. And when it comes to wool, you want to make sure that you wash it properly. Otherwise, it can shrink absurdly. So I have washed just a few of these. I have to say that they're quite new and I do not wash very often. I did get questions about how often do you wash your knitwear? I would say you should, well, it really depends on how much you're wearing them and for how long and where you're going. One thing that I like to do with basically all my knits is to wear something underneath. So to protect my sweaters, I try to wear something thin underneath. And that's amazing if you have sensitive skin, because the, if it's in a case of a mohair sweater, this will protect your skin from any itchiness. So I have been wearing a Uniqlo piece that I really like. It's a scoop neck shirt. It's very comfortable, super thin, so it's not going to make it you too warm. But I do have another option that I got from Express that's much, much warmer. So whenever it's really, really cold, I get this one instead, the Express. It is. Uh, it has a very nice neck line, which makes it very easy to wear. For example, my Gaspard that have boat neck, so i'm gonna link below in case you guys want to take a look the second thing that i do is i try to wear maybe five or six times um, before washing it i know it might sound sound gross but if you think about it especially the way i do i can wash my shirt a lot more often instead of my sweater and i can make my sweater less longer if i just don't wash as often i used to wash my sweaters with laundress but after they had a recall I switched to Wolite and I really like it. 
The scent is really nice. It's very gentle. It has a lot of natural um, ingredients. So I really appreciate that brand and I've heard so many good things about them. So I highly recommend. I'm going to be washing this with you so you can see how it turns out. Another step I would highly recommend if you want to keep your sweaters clean and fresh for a longer time is to spray them in between washes. I like to rotate my sweater so I do not wear them twice or three times in a row. I prefer to just take it off when I get home and then I spray with this Muse Apothecary, the Pillow Ritual. I've been using the lavender scent but they have so many others and I really like how calming this is. It's not overwhelming and I really like how it smells. So I spray my sweater on the front and also in the back. And then instead of putting right away in my wardrobe, I just leave it out for a day. And then the next day I can fold it back and put it in my wardrobe. Another thing that you want to do to preserve your sweater is to store properly. You do not want to hang your sweaters. You don't want hangers because it's going to change the shape. It's going to make it uh, longer but narrow. So I would not recommend hanging any of your knits. It's really the best to keep either in drawers or to keep in shelves. I like to keep mine in shelves because I feel like it takes up less space than in drawers. You will see that my Leontine and some of my smaller um, thinner Knits, they are in drawers, but those are just much thinner and they can just go there without a problem. Especially the cashmere, I'm gonna be talking about cashmere in a minute. I bought those dividers from Amazon and I really like them because it makes it very easy for me to grab. It's very easy to grab, you can just do this and it comes perfectly, it doesn't have any creases, it doesn't have anything wrong with it. So I like to, share, to store this way because as soon as I pick the sweater, it's just ready to wear. I don't have to use a steamer or anything. So this one is the Emile. I have worn this quite a bit, maybe five or six times. I think I'm gonna have to wash very soon, but it still smells really good. It has, smells like my perfume and I really love this one. But how I store, I simply take the sweater like this. I'm gonna do it this way so you can see. Then I put one side, the other side, and then I fold it in one. It gets like this. You can definitely fold in um, two, maybe, or even three, or you can roll it two. Should be completely fine. But this is the way that works best for my wardrobe. By the way, this wardrobe is from Ikea, the one behind me as well. They are the PAX system. And if you want, I can definitely share some details of, of it. I really liked how it turned out. I was the one who designed it. I had to really think about for about a month and it was a lot of work to decide what I wanted, how many shelves, if I wanted drawers. I ended up getting so many baskets and I like the baskets especially for knits if it's a good option because it's very airy, the air just goes through and it doesn't feel like you don't feel any mold or like damp, anything. It's just it's great. The, the baskets are great but I don't think they can store as much as the shelves or like actual drawers, like wood drawers. But I'm gonna do a wardrobe video um, at another point because I really want to focus on the knitwear. This way it doesn't get too long. The colors I picked. So I would say that I'm definitely inclined to wear neutrals the most. And when I wear colors, I try to do toned down colors. What does that mean? Like not super bright colors. I just don't like how they look on me. Maybe it's my personality. Maybe it's just how it goes with my skin tone. But when I do colors, I really prefer things like this. This is probably one of the brightest I have and the yellow, it's kind of bright too. But in general, if you look at the palette, it's basically toned down, just muted tones. I just love them. I think they are much easier to pair with the bottoms that I have. So I ended up just getting too many of these but again, you know, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, but I have already too many A-Crew sweaters. Um, I personally don't think that's a problem because if you're going to wear 10 A-Crew sweaters, it's best than having 10 sweaters, one of each color, and you just reach for like two or three. I would just, you know, fill your wardrobe, fill my wardrobe with colors that I actually like. So if you are in love with a crew just get a lot of a crew you know you don't have to just uh, because it's cool to have colors or it's cool to have black sweaters or darker sweaters 
you know, you just do do what you do. Be yourself. Like you like that, just get that. You know, I have been really uh, torn in terms of a crew knits because Cezanne does have a lot of a crew knits, knits, but I'm like, yeah, I do have enough. But at the same time, like I said, I think I would wear them so much more than collars. It's just so much easier to pair with anything. The best material if you want to keep yourself warm, I would say it's wool. The most comfortable one is merino wool by far. Cezanne has a lot of mohair pieces. The mohair pieces, they are very warm and they are an excellent material. I think it's going to last so long if you take care of it. The only problem is that it sheds very much compared to the merino wool and it can be really, really itchy depending on your sensibility, like your skin. For some Cezanne knits, especially the ones that have mohair, you can see a lot of the mohair coming out of the clothes. What's gonna make this better is washing it and just wearing it. Obviously, the first times you're gonna see this a lot everywhere, especially if you're wearing something like a darker bottom. I feel like this will show so much. So if that's something that bothers you, I would stay away from mohair. I see this a lot here, you can see on the side, hopefully my camera is showing. So one of the, the knits here that I do not wear at all is this sweater here, the Lison. This one has mohair, but I don't think it's um, the mohair. I don't know what it is, but it's a very, 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 very scratchy knit. So the one that I don't wear, at all it's this one the the lison i love the style i love the color but i don't really wear because it's not comfortable in this one it would be very hard for me to wear something underneath it would have to be maybe a cami top but it's not going to protect my arms so i don't really wear this one a lot i think it's really beautiful they do have similar ones in different colors but i just don't wear you know at all <laughs> Another sweater that I don't wear much is this one that I got, I don't know, maybe two years ago and I didn't even take the tag off. I don't think I ever wore this one. It's the Julia. I think this is beautiful, but the collar doesn't really go on me. I feel like it washes me out so badly. And another thing is it's short sleeves, so it kind of breaks the purpose of wearing a sweater. Usually when I wear sweaters, it's because it's cold outside and I want to be cozy. I don't want to be cold. But when it comes to this one, it has a like three quart sleeves. I think that's how it's called. And because of that, I never know when to wear. Like sometimes it's just too warm and then I don't want to wear a niche. And then sometimes it's too cold. I do want to wear a niche, but I don't want short sleeves, if you know what I'm saying. So this one kind of limits me, but I really like it. I am having a really hard time to let go of it because I love the texture. I love the feel. It's just very comfortable. are definitely the Akil, the Gaspard. They are sweaters that are just so easy to pair because they're simple, they're minimalist, they don't have a lot going on. When it comes to Amans, to Anouk, even though they're so gorgeous and they're probably the most beautiful niche wear that I own because of all the details, I feel like sometimes it's hard to pair depending on the bottoms you're wearing. So when I have to pick something very quickly, I normally do the Brie jumper. I do a keel, I do Gaspar, I also wear a meal a lot, a lot, a lot. Same for James, what else do I wear so much? Oh, the Sammy sweater, which is merino wool, I believe, and Othello, also very easy. The Lucas is a sweater that I really like, it's very comfortable, but the problem with Lucas is that it is uh, bulkier and it has the buttons here, so it's a more casual feel. And I really have to wear the right pair of pants with it, otherwise it doesn't go very well. I also love my Alma jumpers. I have two of them from last year. They're pretty itchy. So if I had to give you a, a score, like a rate in terms of itchiness, I would say the most, like the itchiest ones would be the Lee Zone, extremely itchy. I do find this Akil, particularly this one, very, very itchy. The Olive one is itchy, but not as much. Aretha is very itchy. Trudy is quite itchy, I have to say. Uh, the Egide is itchy. All my Gaspards are a little bit itchy. I am not too sensitive, but I do have some sensibility. Sensitivity. 
the Clara cardigan, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's very itchy too. It's Lizette. It's quite itchy too. Other than that, I feel like everything else here is quite comfortable. So the most comfortable ones I would say are the merino wool ones. I really love my Betty cardigans. The James jumper is certainly one of the most comfortable. I have two of them. The Angelie, which is quite new, is very comfortable as well. Brie jumper, Manon, Lucas. Um, these are very, very comfy and they have cotton in their composition. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about. If you are looking for something that's not itchy, I would def definitely go with the cotton or merino wool because the other compositions, um, they are just a little bit on the itchy side. And also in terms of warmth, I would say that wool obviously is the material that keeps you the warmest. So if you live in a mild climate, I would just stick to cotton and maybe merino wool if it's something thinner. So I will show you guys the less bulky sweaters that I have that are in the drawer, so come with me. So in this drawer, I keep my other sweaters. Those are not as bulky and I keep all my cashmere. I would say that cashmere is one of the best fabrics, the best knits you can have. I do not have any Cezanne cashmere sweaters, but the ones that I have, I really like. They're either, either from Quinn's or I got from Bloomingdale's. I also got a couple from, I think, Natum. I'm gonna show you guys all of them. I also have a decorated one. This is Ralph Lauren. This is very old, actually, it was a gift. I used to work for a family. I was a babysitter many years ago, and they gave me so many of these cashmere sweaters. I still have them and I really love them. So cashmere is one of the best fabrics, and if you take care of it, you can keep like forever. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I wash mine and how I take the pill off because they do pill a lot. So I kept those that are not bulky in here because they're easy to reach and they just go really nicely together. But I prefer like in general, you know, the idea of having all my knits in this part because it's simply easier to see, it's easier to grab. And there is a mirror. This is a wardrobe. Let me just show you guys that has you know a mirror so it's very easy for me to grab things and um just have access to them more easily all the sweaters you see here are very comfortable i picked them because i know that some of you are very sensitive to mohair and some materials that may cause some itchiness so i decided to just show you some of them in case you're looking for that specific kind of material something soft and comfortable i would highly recommend a lina or a lina i have it in three colors the black the raspberry and also the acru which is the one i have worn the most these are super super comfortable and they are just great for spring i think they're not very warm they could even be worn in the summer i would say depending on the day like on a cool day two others that i love are the sammy jumpers they are very flattering they are cropped so if you're a petite i think this one would be a very nice choice i also love my lucas jumpers i have three colors of lucas i have the acru the navy and also a black one with the gold buttons that i got a while ago and i still love it so much the other ones which I mentioned before would be Leontine. They're right here. I have two of them and Brie Jumper. They're all, they kind of feel the same. You know, they're not the softest, but they do not have any itch. They are 100% cotton, so they are very comfortable. And probably the most comfortable ones I ever owned, I would say, are the James. James and James. I have it in two colors. Absolutely love it. What is a surprise for me is that there are two mohair sweaters that do not have any itch. So if you're looking for a mohair sweater, in my opinion, Amance is the most beautiful sweater, maybe, that Cezanne has ever, you know, made. I think it's truly beautiful. It is so soft and they have it in many colors now. So Amance and Othello, they both have mohair, but they are extremely comfortable. 
One from last year, maybe from two years ago, that I got during the archives is this one. I think it's called the Ronnie Jumper, and they have very similar ones with the same fabric. So I think this one is great for summer or for spring, whenever it's warmer, and you still want to wear a knit. Regarding the other brands that I own, I would say that Quince is the one that I have the most um, cashmere sweaters from because I really like the price point. I think the quality is great. I've been wearing this for so long, I don't see any pilling. I do see pilling for other pieces that I have by Quince, but I think it's normal because those areas, they just rub very easily and they cause the pilling. I love Quince. I'm going to link these for you guys. I got my first rosé sweater, this one. Um, it's casual, but I paid so much on this one. I think it's my most expensive sweater. I do not regret, but um, I don't know if I would get another one. I have this one by Lily Silk. I just love stripes so much. This one is very comfortable, and I got um, last year, and I wore so much. This is from W Concept. I already reviewed this sweater. It's a great quality knit. I have not worn it yet. Didn't have a chance. But I really love how it fits and how it feels. The color is also great. I have one by The Curated. I have reviewed some of their coats before. Amazing quality piece. They gave me a cashmere comb, which I don't know where I put, but I'm going to try and find to share with you guys. I have a few other pieces that are cashmere as well. This one, for example, is by Ralph Lauren. I got this from... The family I used to work for, they um, gave me so many amazing pieces. They already had that for so many years and I still have now and it's been maybe eight years with me. So a fantastic cashmere piece. Um, I absolutely love this. So cozy. I have this by Quince. It's another cashmere sweater. This is by Everlane. So I have two I have two cashmere sweaters by Everlane and I really love them. I have worn both a lot actually and they're holding up really well. And another one by Quince. I actually have quite a few but I just wanted to show you guys very quickly. It does have some billing but I show you guys it's very easy to just use a little machine or a cashmere comb and take this whole thing off. And I also had to show you this from Mango, which I got so long ago, but I absolutely love this piece. It's probably one of my favorite knits that I have ever owned. I think this is so beautiful. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, but I wanted to share with you guys because it's definitely a piece that you're going to see so much of me wearing. This is the current situation of my James sweater. You can see there is some filling that happened over um, the time and that's perfectly normal whenever you're wearing wool or cashmere, that kind of um, natural fiber, you will see natural filling. So I'm going to put it like this so you can see and especially inside I see even more because that's the area that rubs onto your skin or onto your pants like whatever you're wearing. So I brought this on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how it is in real life, you know, after you wear for a few times. It's actually not bad. I've had sweaters that got way, way worse with the peeling. Also, it is dirty and I'm going to be washing. You can see here by this, this is makeup. So I'm going to show you guys how I would wash this and you can see all the details. Now... One thing I have that's really helpful is this tool here that I got from Amazon. This helps with the peeling. So my only complaint is that it's too small. This is from another sweater that I um, used. So it's super easy to, to use. The only problem with this one is that it's way too small. So it's a great size for travel, but on a daily basis, you would have to empty this a few times. This is all from cashmere a few times in order to to use so it's super simple you just have to put two batteries um, inside and i'll try to link a bigger one because this one is just way too small but it's it's good it works well so i'm going to take for example one part that has the peeling and i'm going to do with you guys so you can see so i'm going to do with this part here so we can see how that works it just cuts 
for you. You see, it's gone. So it's pretty effective. Well, the cashmere that I'm wearing today is actually really bad, like filling. And I normally, when I see that stuff happening, I just use this on it and it's very effective, very efficient. Like it's gone right away, you see. And the lint, just like the, the wool, just goes in here and then you have to empty and redo it. So this one is fine. I have another cashmere sweater here that I wore a lot. This one's also by Quince. Those cashmere sweaters, they cost just 50 bucks. So definitely a great price. It's soft, it's flattering. I really like how they fit. And I have quite a few. So you can see here the, the peeling. And just take it out right away. So it's quite fast. I think the cashmere comb is also really helpful. So I like to have both. And you can see that it just gets so much better. Like I didn't do on this area, but this part you can see how much better it got. In terms of the price point, they can be very pricey, but in my opinion, if you're going to wear an off and if you have a good quality piece that's going to last you so many years, I think it's totally worth the money. I do have pieces that I got from other brands before, like H&M, um, mostly fast fashion. And even though I love them and I like how they look on me, they don't last. When you wash, you already see the peeling, you already see that something is going on. It doesn't have the same shape. So I really appreciate having a good piece that's going to last me maybe 10 years, 20 years, maybe even more if I take care of it. I would say that I am a true small for knits for pretty much every brand because I do have broad shoulders. I do not have a lot of chest, but if you measure my rib cage, it's about 30, seven inches or like 89 centimeters something around that so i would say that small always is good for me it doesn't feel too long i am not petite i'm five foot five 166 centimeters again all my measurements are down below so i would say that small is my size it's really hard for me to tell you how to pick your size i would stick to your size for sure but some of these pieces they will run large so for example the it, this one for example i am wearing this small but i like the super oversized fit so some people just prefer the extra small for more fitted they actually have the basil now which is a very similar but more slim fit um, but i would say that the ones that i have in extra small are the lisette whenever i see something with a very low neck i normally size down because i don't want this to be too low so the lisette i got in extra small lison all my gas part are extra small and the Manon is also extra small my Amons is extra small even though I tried the small and it was pretty good I only got the extra small because the small was not available and everything else is just a small size which is my usual size so I can't say for sure but if you have a question about a specific niche from Cezanne just let me know because I might have tried already and just have reviewed maybe so I would say just stick to your size for most of it, but they do say in for every single piece, they do mention to size down or up if you're in between sizes. So for sizing is tricky, especially because sometimes it is inconsistent. I feel like knits, they just stretch so easily, especially like after you wash or after you wear a few times, they can get, they can shrink or they can simply get uh, just bigger. So it's really hard to say, but I would try, like if I had to pick, I would say just stick to your usual size. In terms of warmth, I would say the ones that are the warmest are the ones that have mohair or merino wool. Obviously, wool is the one that is the material that keeps you the warmest. So if you're looking for warm ones, I would stick to obviously the bulky ones, the thick ones and the ones that have wool in their composition. Again, the mohair is great, but it's, it can be a little itchy for some people. So if you are sensitive to the mohair, I would just stay away from it and get instead merino wool or cashmere.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun making the video. If I didn't cover everything, let me know below what you would like to hear from me. I will be happy to answer every single question. I do not have a lot of followers. I have about 3,000 followers at the moment. And I really appreciate each one of you who, ha who has subscribed. It really means so much to me. So I, I know that not all of you ask questions, but even if you do, I'll be so happy to answer. And if you have questions about any of these knits or if you have requests for other videos, I'll be super, super happy to share. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.